From Luka Doncic to Tyreek Evans to LeBron, every year in the NBA, we become enamored with the top prospects that come in and take the league by storm. But oftentimes, some of the best players in every draft take some more time to figure things out. But when they do, it's game over for the opposition. These are the seven best late bloomers in the NBA. So when I sat down to think about these rankings, I didn't really follow any scoring system super closely, but I did make sure that every player on the list qualified under two criteria. Number one, every player had to have at least one season scoring under 10 points a game to start their career. In general, I feel like any rookie that can put up over 10 points a game must have had at least a decent season. Obviously, success varies based on that player's expectations, but there were more than enough guys that met this criteria that I didn't have to think about that sort of thing. And number two, every player had to have made an all-star team at some point in their career. This one's pretty self-explanatory. Looking at all-star appearances is probably the most straightforward way to distinguish the best from the rest. All right, without further ado, let's start at number seven, the nutcracker himself, Draymond Green. Of all the players on this list, Draymond maybe had the slowest start of all. And if not, he's for sure top two or three. As a late round guy without a clear NBA position early on, Draymond struggled to find minutes in his first couple seasons. The man got no tick, averaging just 13 minutes a game in his rookie year and then 21 in his second. And even when he did get on the court, he wasn't exactly getting the crowd on their feet. He put up three and six points a game respectively in those two seasons, while shooting under 40% from the field and under 30 from deep. Yikes. Year 3 though was where he turned things around, suddenly starting every game of the season while putting up 12, 8, and 4 and playing a key role in the Dubs' first chip in 40 years. In the time since then, he's only kept it rolling, rising to become the vocal leader of arguably the best team of all time, while cementing himself as one of the league's best and most versatile defenders. On the way, he's earned 3 All-Star nods, 4 All-Defensive Team honors, and 2 All-NBA appearances along with winning three rings and a Defensive Player of the Year award. Yeah, that's pretty damn good. Love him or hate him, there's no doubt that Draymond is one of the league's best success stories. An average bench warmer that came out of nowhere to become a star in the league. The only thing holding him back from being higher on this list is that, even at his peak, he's never really been considered a superstar. Never putting up more than 15 points a game in any season, and only ever being the third or fourth best player on his team throughout his career. Now I'm not faulting him for that, I mean look at the guys he's playing with. But it's just that he's facing tough competition on this list. Especially the guy at number 6, and that's James Harden. Now Harden's a tough one, because as great as he is, I feel like he's always been looked at as a good player. And his low stats were really more circumstantial than anything, since OKC kept him stuck on the bench his whole damn time there, which is crazy. But at the same time, even after he finally got traded, I don't think anybody thought he'd be this nasty. As expected, Harden's first three years, which were on the Thunder, were his worst, but still weren't bad at all, averaging 9.9, 12, and 17 points a game, and doing it very efficiently. He even scooped up a Sixth Man of the Year award in that third year. But even after playing pretty well in OKC, it was like a whole nother guy in Houston. Once he finally got there in year four, Harden left his bench status in the dust, and almost immediately jumped to superstar level making the All-Star team in each of the next seven seasons, winning a league MVP and two scoring titles, while ascending to the point that he's now considered a top five player in the world, and one of the most unstoppable scorers of all time. That's ever. Harden's peak has probably been better than anybody else on this list, up to this point in their careers, that is. The only reason he's so low is that, like I said at the beginning, he was really never bad to begin with. Now he's a late bloomer, no doubt but some of these other guys just had to go through a lot more growth than he did. Including number five, my guy, Jimmy Butler. The last pick in the first round of the 2011 draft, Jimmy arrived in Chicago as your typical raw athlete. Full of potential, but completely unpolished. And that reflected in his rookie year, as the young Butler warmed the bench and didn't get much of a chance at all to see the court on the number one seeded team. Seeing just 8.5 minutes a game and averaging less than three points for the season. Those stats actually improved dramatically in his next two years, snagging 26 and then 39 minutes a game in his second and third season, while putting up a modest but respectable 9 and 13 points in those two years, 
as he took advantage of his chance to grow his role with D. Rose sideline for all but 10 games in those two seasons. He even made his first all-defensive team in that third year, and quickly began growing his rep as an elite lockdown wing defender. But it was that next year, year four, that Jimmy Butler became Jimmy Buckets. Leading the league in minutes, JB jumped up to 20 points a game, established himself as the number one option on the Bulls, and was named the 2014-15 most improved player, all while earning his first all-star appearance and second all-defensive team honor. The guy exploded onto the scene, and he hasn't slowed down. Jimmy's made an all-defensive team and all-star team in three out of the four seasons since that breakout year, while continuing to average over 20 in that span. He's proved himself to be one of the best two-way players in the game, and despite taking a small dip with his stats and barely missing the all-star team this year, the guy's still unquestionably a star in this league and someone that can explode at any point of any game on either side of the court. But as good of a two-way player as Jimmy is, this next guy is probably even better. At number four, we got Paul George. A bit like Harden, the only real reason Paul George doesn't make the top of this list is that the guy has always been pretty good, even if he didn't get a whole lot of looks early on. Playing behind Danny Granger at the start of his time in Indy, PG put up a solid 8 and 12 points on 21 and 30 minutes in his first two years, starting every game his second season and already shaping up as a promising and bouncy young forward. A lot like Butler after Rose's injuries, it was his third season after Danny Granger got hurt that PG really got his chance to shine and began to become the killer we see today taking over as the leader of his team and putting up an impressive 17-8-4 in that breakout year, which was trophy season for George, who won most improved player while making his first all-star team, first all-defensive team, and his first all-NBA team. Oh, and that was all before leading his team to a Game 7 in the Eastern Conference Finals against LeBron's Miami Super Team. PG's made the all-star team five times, all-defensive team twice, and all-NBA team three times in the six seasons since that point averaging 20 plus in every season aside from the 2014-15 campaign that he pretty much completely missed from his horrific Olympics injury. Not only that, the guys elevated his game to another level again this season, putting up a career high 28 points and looking like a top 5 player in the world. No question he's going to add another all NBA and all defensive team to his resume and shoot, you could even make a case for MVP. Point is, the guy's not stopping anytime soon. Alright, now let me hit the brakes real quick and shift gears. This next guy might not be as hype as the other, and he's definitely not near the most talented on this list. But he's had one of the biggest and most unexpected rises of any NBA player in the game, and 100% deserves a spot on this list. I'm talking Kyle Lowry at number 3. Now you may be questioning this decision. Kyle Lowry? Over Paul George? Over James Harden? Yes. And to explain myself, all I feel like I really have to do is tell you this crazy stat. Lowry had to play 4 seasons before averaging more than 10 points a game, and 8 seasons before making his first all-star team. Absolutely absurd. So let's start at the beginning. As he split time on the Grizzlies and the Rockets in his first 6 years, Lowry definitely did see steady improvement, grinding from 5.6 points a game as a rook to over 14 in his 6th year. He was a good player, but he was definitely no stud. Well it looks like my man just needed a change of scenery. Because after a slow first year getting adjusted and accustomed to the new city, Lowry suddenly burst on the scene in his second season as a Raptor, making waves as a scrappy sharpshooting guard with great court vision and a tough defensive mindset. All of a sudden, Lowry's putting up 18 and 7 on a top-seeded playoff team, but unfortunately got snubbed from making his first All-Star appearance. It only took another year though for people to realize just how good the guy was, as he's made the All-Star team in each of the five seasons since, and an All-NBA team in 2016. No, he's not the best player on this list, but Kyle Lowry is the epitome of a successful late bloomer, showing the world that they should never stop grinding, because you can never be too old to improve. Alright, now that we're winding down, I just gotta say that these last two were easily the hardest to rank, because they both have amazing cases for the top spot. In the end though, I had to give Kawhi a second place. Just like most of the other guys on this list, Kawhi came in as a raw athletic prospect and didn't put up the biggest numbers. but. In spite of that, he undoubtedly found a way to immediately contribute to his team, something that can't be said about most of the other guys on this list. Starting almost every game of his rookie and sophomore seasons on a very good Spurs team led by legends Tim Duncan, Tony Parker, and Manu Ginobili, while putting up a solid 8-12 points a game in those two seasons. The next year was more of the same, 
as Leonard put up 13 a game and continued to be the team's 3 and D guy. Oh, except for the fact that the guy made second team all defense and was named finals MVP in just his third freaking season. This is the main reason it was tough for me to put him at number one, because dude's pretty much been balling since day one, especially on the defensive end. But still, don't get it twisted. That definitely doesn't discount the insane improvement that he's made, which you can clearly see through his numbers. The year after winning finals MVP, Kawhi jumped to 17 and seven, while casually making first team all defense and winning defensive player of the year. No, he didn't make the all-star team, but the guy was already a star, and he wasn't even close to being done. The four years after that, he's made the all-star game in every season aside from the controversial 2017-18 season that he completely missed, jumping from 21 to 25 to 27 points a game, earning two more first-team all-defensive honors, and winning a second Defensive Player of the Year award. The man's a beast, a top 10 player in the game, and the premier two-way player in the league. Don't at me. And he became all that after starting his career as just a decent 3 and D guy. There's really only one man in the entire league that's a bigger freak than Kawhi, and that's number one, the Greek freak himself, Giannis. Unlike Kawhi, who quickly found a role to fill on his team, Giannis was a huge question mark. I mean, what do you do with a kid that was taller than the rest of your centers and skinnier than the rest of your point guards? It wasn't easy to figure out. There's a reason they call him the freak, right? Besides getting to avoid his long ass last name. And these questions are exactly why Giannis is number one. The guy is the definition of a late bloomer in every possible way. Not only has he drastically improved his basketball awareness and skill set, but he's literally grown 3-4 inches and put on 50 pounds of muscle since coming into the league. And you can see all that development in his stats. Coming off the bench in his rookie year, Giannis put up just 7 a game on 25 minutes, while shooting a rough 41% from the floor, and clearly looking like someone who had things he had to figure out. The crazy thing is, he did. Since then, the man's gotten noticeably better every single year. No complacency, no breaks, all improvement. The man went from 13 and 7 on 49% shooting in his third year, to 17 and 8 on 50%, 23 and 9 on 52%, 27 and 10 on 53%, and finally this year, he's putting up an insane 27 and 13 on 58%, and looks well on his way to winning his first MVP as he leads the Bucks to the best record in the entire league. All of a sudden, he went from that awkward lanky kid that really didn't fit anywhere on an NBA court to probably the best player at his age since LeBron. What more is there to say? In his last three seasons, he's made all three All-Star games, won the 2016-17 Most Improved Player, made an All-Defensive team, and two All-NBA teams. And as I said, seems to be a couple months away from winning his first MVP award. But for all the players, it takes a special kind of person to persevere through adversity and do the things that other people said you couldn't. And pretty much everybody on this list did just that. That's all I got for this one. If you're new, slap that subscribe button. And let me know in the comments how you feel about this list. Did I leave somebody out? If you made it this far, I appreciate you. I'll catch you on the next one. I'm out. Peace.